Okay, let's welcome Colin Rosemont. And Sandra Hernandez. And Sandra Hernandez. Yeah. Welcome, Sandra. <laughs> So this is, is such a fascinating issue, just the, the, the issue of wanting to discover these, these artifacts and yet the, the problem of disturbing them. And, and I guess, um, I, guess I, I wonder how both of you kind of, where, if you've come to kind of a, a place with it personally where, where, of what you feel like is, is, is the, the right, they talk in the film about the, the right thing or the good thing to do. Yeah, I think that there is no kind of moral high ground per se. What I, the, the conclusion that I have after working on this for a long time and having friends and not that I consider it both sides of the aisle, but archeologist friends, having academic background myself, studied archeology span and anthropology. Um, I think the, the right way is through collaboration and through uh, essentially listening and coming to some sort of consensus about what should happen because there are real considerations on both sides. What Dave and the archaeologists are saying is very legitimate that there's been a hundred years of looting and uh, you know, colonialism in which British museums, explorers have taken things and there's a very real black market that this stuff is bought and sold on for a lot of money. So that's horrible and we lose knowledge by not having that provenance of where this came from, but if it's not done in consultation and collaboration with tribes, then who are we doing this for and what is this knowledge going towards? Um, it, it was definitely, it took time. I think I was on, I think, one end of the spectrum whenever we started, somewhere in the middle as we continued. And I think now it's definitely, you know, what, what we stated in the film is everything that we'll be able to gain by the work that's been done will benefit our tribe, our culture, you know, moving, progressing in the future. So I think that that's the strain that I've really tried to adopt no matter and believe how hard it is to, uh, not everyone in the tribe supported some of the work we were doing while others did and being in the middle, sometimes that was a very hard road to be in, but it was a lot of personal growth and uh, trust with the really good team um, that we worked with. So that really mattered, the trust between the collaborators. Yeah, and actually Sandra, can you speak to um, where, where's the tribe at with it right now? Um, the tribe is very supportive of all the cultural work that we're doing and so this definitely being one of our, our big cultural projects um, I think has definitely come around in terms of even when I said they weren't supportive it was more like how when your aunts or your family mm, I don't want to be doing that if I were you. you know it, it was like that that was our the non-support of that situation so um, as a family and as relatives they're always going to be supportive of the bigger goals and that's um, for our 1,120 tribal members. So the importance of the work, I think, overshadowed um, maybe some of the negative connotations that could initially exist with archaeology. Yeah. No, just, just a quick follow-up on that. The, there's an inherent pressure that academics feel. It's like they have to produce this stuff. They're under a very... Um, uh, capitally driven timeline. They got to produce their papers. They've got only this much fund. So they're, the system is not necessarily set up to do long form collaborative work. And so that's part of the, um, where, where the archeologists might fall short. Some of it is circumstantial. They're trying, but they're facing all of these alternate pressures. And so I think part of it is baking that into the work itself, that it's not, okay, we need to get in and get out, but building the collaboration and like, okay, we're gonna have to do this for a while to, uh, before we can excavate and before we can do this properly. Cool. And what about you as a filmmaker? How, how, do you, how did you approach this, you know, even aesthetically in a way that you felt was doing justice to, I mean, it's, it's a lot to take on, I imagine. Yeah, it's, it's been a journey. Um, I originally, 
had like some four hour essay film uh, in which I was like, this, I'm just gonna get everything. And it's, it's for a, uh, a very niche audience, but I progressively um, wanted to frame the story within the context of um, both Sanders' experience and some of her family's experience, hence the kind of long opening sequence. So there, that was very important. And it started with very much a bigger picture of who the tribe is and the historical dispossession that took place because that is the backstory to why these lands are privately held and why the tribe hasn't had that access to let's say this specific cultural site and these specific cultural materials for a long time but honing in on the kind of spiritual dichotomy of the relationships to land the cemetery what it means to care for your ancestors um, that there's in some senses different spiritual relationships at play and i think dave and the archaeologists have their own spirituality of how they think about history and their part in it. Um, but that was like what I was trying to really hone in on while giving voice to several sides. Ed Jolie, who's an academic who has native heritage and views, about, views it in a different way. So really trying to give uh, a lot of voices um, time to hopefully come together in this little story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, questions from the audience right in the back.